Principles for Biblical Stewardship When it comes to money, the Bible talks a lot about money. In fact, Jesus talked different parables about finances. When the Bible talks about finances, it talks about our attitude and then it talks about the principles of managing our finances in a way that glorifies God. Money is very important to us as a Christian because money is a competition for our heart. The Bible says you can't serve God and mammon. It doesn't say you can't serve God and the devil. Mammon is money. It's, it's the love of money. It's the deceitfulness of riches and the competition for your heart is finances. But one of the biggest reasons why we all need to learn to steward our finances properly is because of this verse. It's very, very important. Listen to me. I know some of you may be like, oh, this is not super spiritual. You know, I just want to learn about casting out of demons, healing the sick and fasting and, and getting, you know, getting, hearing the voice of God and visions and dreams and all of that. But listen very carefully because the key to your spiritual growth is this verse. Luke chapter 16 verse 11. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? What if how you handle your finances has a lot to do with how much God can trust you with true spiritual riches? We all want spiritual riches. We all want spiritual wealth. We want to grow rich toward God. We want to grow wealthy in the kingdom of God. In things that are not measured by dollars and stocks and possessions in spiritual things. But Jesus says that God is looking at how we are handling. God is not looking how much money we have. He's looking at how we are handling the money we do have. What is our attitude? What is our behavior? And God says when He looks at that and He sees that you're faithful, not if you're successful, but if you're faithful with the unrighteous mammon, He will entrust you with true riches. So a few things I want you to keep in mind. Four attitudes that the Scripture teach us that's supposed to be behind the scenes, behind how we manage our finances. Because see, I can tell you what we should do with our finances and I will do that in a second. But it's the attitude, it's the mindset you have toward money that matters. It matters way more than what you're going to do with finances. It's the attitude behind our financial behavior that matters as much as the actual financial decisions we make. The first attitude is to be content and not covetous. In 1st Timothy chapter 6 verse 6 all the way till verse 10. It talks about Christians living to be content. As Christians we shouldn't covet what other people have. We should be content. Content doesn't mean that we don't want more. Content doesn't mean that we don't want to work. Content doesn't mean that we're not striving for excellence. Content simply means that we're not driven by those desires. That we are happy with food, with clothing and the fact that we know God. The second attitude that should rule our financial life and that is we should trust in God not in riches. Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. We should trust in God not in our riches. What makes a difference between a Christian and a non-Christian is that a non-Christian is somebody who trusts in their wealth. They trust in their money. They love their money and that's what makes money evil. Not the money itself. It's the fact that they make it into an idol. For a Christian we trust in God who richly supplies, not in riches. The third attitude that's supposed to dominate our life concerning finances is we have to be generous, not stingy. So many Christians fight over should we tithe, should we not tithe. I think it's, it's a secondary question. What we do agree on is that we all as Christians should be generous. What generous looks to you and me probably will be different. At different seasons of your life generosity will be different. Yet one thing is certain is generosity reflects the heart of God. Instead of clinging to our finances, instead of constantly hoarding, instead of constantly being stingy, instead of being greedy, Christ wants us to be like Him. Be generous and be givers to the poor, to the needy, to our own family, to His causes, to His purpose and to what He wants us to give to on this earth. The fourth attitude that we should maintain in our finances is we should walk in faith not in fear. Fear and worry can cripple your financial life more than any pandemic, recession or you know market crash. So many people are trapped in fear of what could happen and worry is what could possibly happen. Like there's no threat yet under finances but worry creates these imaginary problems. When talking about finances, Jesus addressed that. He says, do not worry about your next meal. He's not saying be reckless. He's not saying be irresponsible. He's just saying don't let worry dictate your financial behavior. Don't let fear drive your decisions. Let faith drive your decisions. So our attitude is we live by faith not by fear. We trust in God not in riches. We live in contentment not trying to covet and we live developing the muscle of generosity instead of being greedy or stingy. Now let's dive into practically how to manage 
our finances. Again, it's very important that you learn to manage your finances because if you don't manage your finances well, God cannot entrust you with true spiritual riches. So many people are trying to improve their prayer life, their fasting life, their this life and that life. But one area they constantly ignore and they think, ah, it doesn't matter how I manage my finances. I'm maxed out on my credit cards. I'm always buying things I don't need with money I don't have to impress people I don't even like. You know, I'm constantly covering. I'm greedy. I'm stingy. I don't trust God with finances. I'm panicking all the time, you know, clenching to every dollar and fighting with my wife and with my husband, you know, about money all the time. It doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. My friend, it does. God looks at that to decide if you can be entrusted with true riches. So practically. Now some of this stuff is not in the Bible, what I'm going to share with you, but it's just common sense wisdom. The first one is give 10% of your income to local church. Now I know preacher says that and a lot of you may be like, oh my God, the New Testament doesn't talk about tithing. Well, kind of does. Jesus did mention that we shouldn't forsake the heavier things of the law without forsaking the lighter things of the law. But let's just say that there is no mention about that except in that one verse. In the New Testament, we see that we should live extravagantly generous. We should purpose in our heart to be generous. And so I encourage people, give to God first and make it a percentage thing. Like some people do it spontaneous, but it's best when you make your percentage, whether it's 10%, 20%, 5%, whatever it is, that you make it a percentage and you give to God. Do you have to give? No, you get to give. What giving does to me is it reminds me I'm not the owner, I'm a steward. It reminds me God owns it all and He entrusted this to me. Does God need my money? No, but I need God and I need to be constantly reminded since money is a competition for my heart that money is not my master. I manage money. I'm not mastered by money. And you can't say that money is not your master if you don't give. That's it. So no matter how you try to excuse it and justify it, if you are not generous with your finances and the best way to start is with your paycheck. When you get paid, you take a portion and you give it to God. You honor Him with your finances. Trust me, 90% blessed by God is way better than 100% not blessed by Him. Do you have to do that? No, you get to do that. So that's the first principle. The second principle is save from 10 to 20% of your income for upcoming expenses, emergencies, large purposes, purchases and other things. When you say, the Bible says in the house of a wise man, there's choice silver. Meaning this wise man, he didn't eat everything up. He saved something. The scripture talks about a prodigal son who went and spent all that he had. See, when you spend everything that you have and that's been your lifestyle. Now, sometimes there are seasons where expenses come up and different uh, things happen. But if it's been your lifestyle, you always spend everything you make. Let me ask you a question. How different are you from a prodigal son? Now, you may say, well, I'm not spending it on prostitutes and harlots. Well, you know, he didn't just spend it on them. He just spent all of it. Don't spend everything that you make. Save money for the rainy day. Save money for emergencies. Save money for large purchases. So you don't have to buy them on credit so you can buy them with cash. Number three is budget the rest of 70 or 80 percent depending on how much you're saving. When it comes to budgeting, a few things to keep in mind. God wants us to curve our spending. Curve our spending means we have to curve our appetites. Curve our spending meaning we shouldn't spend all the money that we have. And a lot of times what happens is that we have this faith, dreams and we start to spend on the level of our dreams instead of spending on the level of our income. And then we get influenced by somebody else who has those things, nice things, newer, nicer, sh shinier, cooler. And we begin to go into this shopping spree and we begin to buy things we don't need. Buy things out of greed, buy things out of our season, out of our time and find yourself in a very, very deep hole financially. Curve your appetites. Lust is one of those things, it never has enough. Greed is one of those things, it's never enough. There's always going to be something new. There's always going to be another ad. There's always going to be something that is going to fight for your attention and is going to say buy me buy me and if you buy me you're gonna be happier you're gonna be prettier and you're gonna fit in and it's your life is gonna be so much better the devil is a liar those you know sales and discounts listen sometimes those things are demonic distractions for you to take you out of a place of your budget and so really ask yourself do I really need those things look through your expenses look through your subscriptions Look through your cable subscription, sports subscription, magazine subscriptions and so many things and ask yourself, do I need that? Is that really necessary? Begin to curve your spending. Use wisdom in investing. So the next tip is use wisdom in investing. The Bible talks about investment. In Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 2 it says that give to, give a portion to seven or even to eight for you know not what disaster may come on the earth. So we see that with a man who, the king who gave 
talents to his servants and you know one servant he saved it and the rest of the servants they invested it and the one who saved it was called wicked and lazy. The one who invested it was called faithful and good. And so God wants you to invest and in fact even Jesus talked about investing in the New Testament by saying that we should invest not only in the stock market and real estate but we should invest into the kingdom of God. He saw giving as an investment. He wasn't trying to get a get rich quick scheme going. He wasn't trying to say hey if you give a dollar you're gonna get a hundred back. He was just saying that in the light of eternity you know whatever you give there is going to come back to you. You know it leaves your hand but it never leaves your life because it's gonna stay in your heavenly account and it will collect dividends. It will collect interest and so investments is good and as Christians the moment you have a little bit of extra finances don't seek to upgrade your living. That's the one of the mistakes that people make is the moment they have a little bit more, they get a raise, they get a bonus and they right away say, what new things I can buy. Now I understand nothing wrong with, you know, buying new things and upgrading and there's, there's nothing wrong with that. But if that is your lifestyle, if that is how you grew up constantly upgrading, when you have an opportunity to invest into something, to have money, make money for you. And instead of you constantly working, you can have something else working on the side on your behalf that could bring resources to you. It's a biblical principle and so I'm not a professional investor. I invest into things. I encourage you to invest. I encourage you to open your mind, read books about it, uh, listen to, to seminars. I'm not talking about some of these schemes that are going around of people talking about investment who only make money about talking investment, actually don't invest into anything and stuff. So, But be wise concerning investment. Don't invest money you don't have. Don't invest in things you don't, or you don't understand and don't invest to get rich quickly because you will get poor quickly. God tells us to be patient and to invest for long term. Avoid borrowing. The scripture clearly states that he who is a borrower is a slave to the one who he borrows from. And so unless it's buying a house, everything else we should avoid borrowing. Avoid using credit cards if you can pay them off before you know the end of the month. And so I know some people are like, oh but I get the points. Yeah but he also spent hundreds and thousands of dollars in interest. You know, oh yeah, but my, my FICO score, you know, if you're going to be living in debt all your life, you're a slave regardless of your FICO score. I'm not against credit cards. I use them all the time, but I pay them off literally within the same month. So I don't pay any interest to the companies that I use the credit cards from. And so avoid being a slave to the company, to American Express, the Visa or to debt, to anything else that you are constantly have everything on payment. And then God forbid you lose your job and next thing you know is that everything else, you lose everything else and, and then you, you become very broken. Not because the devil attacked you, it's because you didn't structure your finances in a way that honored God and obeyed His principles. And the last truth, a principle to financially be faithful in unrighteous mammon is be diligent and hardworking. Now we live in a day today where people are, everybody wants to quit work and nobody wants to work and people just want to go pursue their dreams. I'm not against that. I'm all for seek your passion, pursue your passion. But anything that requires you not to work and just chill, Netflix and chill, it's not scriptural. Bible is very clear that God created us to work. Work is not a curse. It didn't come after the curse. Work was something that God created Adam before he fell into sin. In fact, we're probably going to even work in heaven. We're going to create, we're going to manage, we're going to do something. So work is good and you should work as long as you physically can. You might not be able to have, you know, nine to five for the rest of your life, but you still should work. Even if you retire, you should never retire from work. You should work. You should do something that you enjoy, move, create, write, help, volunteer, serve. You know, you should be engaged because when you work, you glorify God. When you work, you utilize your potential. You're more like God. You, you create things, you make things happen and that's a good thing. And people who don't work, the Bible says they shouldn't eat. And so unless you're physically not able to work or you're handicapped or you're on disability, but if you're a young person or a young adult and you're able to work, go to work. Oh, they're not hiring. Listen, go do something for free. Volunteer. Go rake somebody's leaves. Go mow somebody's lawn. Go pick up garbage. Do something. Don't sit at home, eat Cheetos and watch Netflix and say nobody's hiring. Do not do that. Don't play a victim. Go and work. Do any kind of work. Oh, but I, they're not treating me well. Oh, but they're not paying enough. Shut up. Don't do that. Go and work. Every disciple that Jesus called into ministry, they were doing something. They were fishing, cleaning nets, you know. Even the Matthew tax collector, he was ripping people off. <laughs> he was working. Work. Work is a good thing. You know, I'm not talking about workaholism. I'm talking about working, staying busy, working for God, building our careers and so many other things. So may God give you wisdom to be faithful in unrighteous mammon, to manage your finances, 
to master your attitude, to master the finances and to manage the finances in a way that glorifies Him and sets you up for your new, new level in true riches for God. Is there something you know about finances that you've experienced? Could you share it with us? Drop that in the comments below. What did you learn from this video? And as always, don't forget to click thumbs up and follow this channel. Subscribe to this channel. Click on the bell below so that you can be reminded each time that we go live. And until next time, God bless you.